Okay, in this chapter we'll talk about aromatic compounds. The basic aromatic compound is going to be benzene and because this is a survey class uh, we will not go deep into many 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 aromatic compounds so we're just going to describe how this benzene ring would react and as you can see this ring is basically what you see here right because each carbon must have four bonds so each of these uh, carbons has four bonds where they are not shown there's a hydrogen and of course for here the hydrogen is missing because it was replaced but this whole group here which happens to be a uh, ketone but basically benzene will just have this shape if it's not substituted okay so you'd see that these carbons are sp2 hybridized the double bonds are conjugated which means you have a double double bond single bond double bond single bond pattern in a ring and they keep on going round so actually one would easily just draw a circle in there and that's another factor that makes it call uh, makes it to be aromatic so this it's flat it's a ring there is a um, complete conjugation okay and then it follows uh, what we call the 4m plus 2 rule, which we'll not discuss because it's a survey class, survey organic class. So all those things that I've mentioned, it's a ring, it's planar or flat, it's conjugated and follows 4m plus 2 rule of pi electrons. Those, that's what makes it aromatic, but we'll not go deep into that. We'll not talk about that anyway. So let's generally talk what talk about what we need to in this chapter as an overview or in summary so it's gonna have the formula c6h6 because like i said you're gonna have six carbons and th six hydrogens to make up the four bonds on each carbon and it's highly unsaturated so ihd is called index of hydrogen deficiency index of hydrogen deficiency it simply tells you the number of pi bonds or the number of rings possible IHD is always equal to a half twice the number of carbons in the formula plus two subtract number of hydrogens um, subtract number of halogens halogens could be beer chlorine iodide fluorine and then you add any number of nitrogens in the formula so for benzene its ihd will be equal to a half twice of six two times six because there are six carbons plus two which is just part of the formula Okay, minus hydrogens, there are six. There's no halogen, there's no nitrogen in the formula. So this happens to be a half, 14 minus six, which is just a half of eight. The answer is four. So it's, it's highly unsaturated because the IHD value is high. Like I said, IHD gives you the number of pi bonds or the number of rings. You see, benzene has three pi bonds and one ring, and that makes makes IHD of four. Three pi bonds, one ring, so four IHD. Okay, but we'll cover that in a later chapter. So, the chemical reactivity, it reacts by substitution okay and only gives you one product all hydrogens must be equivalent all these hydrogens on the ring are equivalent of course it's a ring it's planar sp2 hybridized and like i said it will follow 4n plus 2 rule which we will not cover and it follows 4n plus 2 rule which will not cover in this class so you see this the first proposed structure by scientists called Kekel and 
Robinson later on said, hey, these diamonds keep on going around. Why not just draw a circle in there? Okay, so if you were to compare the bond length, one would have thought that because diamonds are shorter than um, single bonds, you would, have, you would have thought that this should be short, this should be long, this should be short, this should be long, because a single bond, this should be short, this should be long. But that's not true because it's it was later discovered by other scientists after Kekel that all these bonds have the same bond length of 1.39 angstroms. And what's the reason? Because of resonance. It's because this can hop here, this can hop there, this can hop there. There's no telling. Huh? There's no telling where these pi bonds are. They are not static. They are not just uh, on one place they keep going round and that's why of course Robinson put a circle in there like we have it here so the bond length is the same all throughout the ring because of resonance now the double bonds are made by the electrons in the p orbitals that overlap side side and so you get a what you call a pi cloud Okay, on top of the ring. So this describes the structure of benzene. Um, how does benzene react? It can react by electrophilic substitution rather than electrophilic addition that we did for regular alkenes. So regular alkenes, we say that they react by addition and we did mention that we are adding most of the time by Markovnikov addition. If not, just adding across the double bond. That does not happen in benzene because benzene is aromatic. It does not react like a regular alkene even though it has the three double bonds. You know, if you have a hydrogen here and you're reacting with any type of an electrophile, whether you're brominating, halogenating, so to speak, or sulfonating, nitrating, the hydrogen is just simply going to be replaced by the electrophile. If the electrophile is NO2+, if the electrophile is a sulfonic acid, if the electrophile is a bromine, if the electrophile is a carbocation, if the electrophile is um, uh, an SO group, all these are examples of E pluses that can be used to substitute one of the hydrogens the ring you end up with a substituted product the hydrogen is gone okay so benzene does not react like regular alkenes so why the difference like i said it's because of aromaticity the extra stability associated with aromatic compounds that goes along with resonance is what makes aromatic compounds react differently from alkenes even though they have double bonds and generally the aromatic compounds will be cyclic planar fully conjugated and contain 4n plus 2 pi electrons where n will solve for 1 2 3 uh, okay and like i said we're not gonna go deep into this at this point i'll just give you an example of what 4n plus 2 number of pi electrons is so this is the structure of benzene how many pi bonds we have three pi bonds which means we have six pi electrons so you use those to solve for n in the formula for n plus two pi so four n plus two pi electrons let's solve for n if we end up with zero as an answer one two three four etc then this rule is obeyed you do not want a fraction. You don't expect fractions as n values. You want whole numbers or zero. Zero or whole number. So n must be equal to zero over or a whole number, not fractions. So benzene, like I said, has six pi electrons. That's where I got this from. So let's solve for n and see if we're going to get a whole number of zero. 
for benzene. So for N will be equal to uh, 6 pi minus 2 pi electrons. So for N equals to uh, 4 and N will solve for 1, which obeys this fourth rule for aromaticity. So benzene is completely aromatic because it's a ring, it's planar because I know everything here is sp2 hybridized, which means all those carbons are trigonal planar. So, and it's fully conjugated because there's resonance. And then I've just shown you how to apply for n plus two rule to solve for n, finding it, finding to see, checking to see if it's gonna solve for a whole number, a whole number, but not a fraction. All right, so the resonance energies a measure of the extra stability because resonance stabilizes a structure of the system. And you can see that um, uh, the hypothetical molecule with no resonance, which is cyclohexatriene, will have a very high energy, which means the bond lengths are different. So the resonance is not possible because if you are to do resonance, then you expect to have equal bond lengths. So benzene is having a stability um, of this amount right there. So even though it has three bonds, it's more stable than, even though it has three pi bonds, it's more stable than this, which is, which has three pi bonds, but it's not having equal bond length. Okay. So the issue is this. I want you to follow me closely. So whenever you have one, whenever you don't have any pi bond, the energy, let's say the energy stabilization energy is zero. Okay, or let's say the energy of the system is zero, so to speak. Whenever you have a pi bond, the value will be 120. So whenever you have two pi bonds, one would easily say, okay, I need 120 times 2, so it's 240. But you see, you see how it's not 240, it's 230, it's because they are conjugated. So it becomes, it compensates for itself by resonance. So it becomes a little bit stable, even though it has two pi bonds. And then if you had three pi bonds, then it should have been three times 120. So one would expect 360 for the hypothetical cyclohexatriene, which we think, which we pretend that it does not have resonance. But actually, it turns out that the, the ring has an energy of 208, even though there are three pi bonds, because we would have expected 360 by multiplying each pi bond present by three, because there are three pi bonds, you would expect 360, but see, it's 208. You see the energy difference is 152 that the ring compensated because 360 minus the 208 that was found to, to be for benzene, you get 152 resonance stabilization. So benzene is super, super stabilized because there's much energy, because there's much energy of stabilization shown here. Okay, like we said, uh, benzene does not do addition reactions, it does substitution reactions. So, because it's resonance stabilized, energy is lost when an electrophile is added, and because of that, you're gonna need a lot, a, 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 a much stronger electrophile, and then you can still regain your resonance energy after losing an extra hydrogen. So um, this does not make a lot of sense to you, but once we start doing mechanisms, you'll see that the very last step is the loss of this hydrogen to gain back aromaticity. But we're gonna talk about that. We're going to talk about this stabilization effect that helps benzene to make substitution products so this is the process that i'm saying this is too much summarized but i'm gonna describe it here so let's say you're starting with benzene it's gonna lose its aromaticity 
you know, it's going to play the role of a nucleophile because it's going to use its pi electron to attack an electrophile. Nucleophiles attack electrophiles. So by doing so, let's say this E blue E plus the electrophile, let's say the electrophile ends up on to this carbon right here. So the other carbon will be one bond less, so it's going to be positively charged. So that's a carbocation. The E plus now is here. You already have a hydrogen here, which is this hydrogen, which is this hydrogen. So you see, you've lost your aromaticity. And that's what this slide is trying to say. Okay. So once you add your electrophile, the benzene will get a plus charge and the plus charge can go around the ring. So you can see you can push these electrons here, you can push this one here, by resonance you get this hybrid resonance structure. So once you get this, it's gonna, it's, it has lost its aromaticity, so you use a base to take out this hydrogen and bring back the pi bond here and the ring is now aromatic. Aromaticity is restored. So again, you attack the electrophile, you get a carbocation. This carbocation can be resonance stabilized. That's what's shown here. And then it's no longer aromatic, but it wants to be gained back its aromaticity. So any base in the system will come and take out this hydrogen and you gain back the third pi bond it's now back to be aromatic okay so this process right here uh, is this process moving forward because benzene ring does not do addition it does substitution so you will have substituted this hydrogen for the electrophile the hydrogen is taken out by a base so i should have written here the bh where B is just a generic base. So this resonance stabilization I'm drawing here is shown here, where the plus sign is next door to this carbon, we call it ortho. Ortho, so the plus sign is next door to where the electrophile is. So it's ortho. But you can do resonance and push this pi bond making a double bond here, this carbon becomes one bond less, it takes the plus charge. Now the plus sign is opposite to the electrophile. We call that para. Okay. And then you can push the, elect the pi bond this way to make a double bond here. The plus charge comes onto this carbon. The plus sign is again next door to the electrophile carbon. So that's again auto. So this is the kind of resonance stabilization. You see the plus sign started was here and it ends up here. So one would draw the hybrid structure like this just to track how it moved. So one would just simply say since the plus sign was up here auto and it ended up down here auto then I should just draw the track on how it went and then put the plus sign like that. So this is called the hybrid. That's a hybrid resonance structure. And it's simply again what you have here. Okay. Now looking at formation of the carbocation intermediate whenever you have benzene, for example, so you will want to use a pi bond to attack the electrophile. So you're going to get a transition state where the electrophile wants to attach to the carbon. And then once the electrophile is added, the other carbon here will bear a plus sign, which will give you the hybrid, which gives you this hybrid carbocation, which is any of this, starting with that. So it's an intermediate. We said carbocations are intermediate, intermediates. And then once intermediate, once, once you form a carbocation intermediate, a base can pull off the hydrogen 
that's what i've shown here the base can pull off the hydrogen so it wants to pull out this hydrogen and it wants to break this bond so you get the second transition state which is this where a hydrogen wants to be pulled out by a base okay and this bond wants to break so you want to make a bond here you want to break this bond this is a second transition state when that happens this bond will be used to regain the double bond to regain aromaticity which is this step where benzene will now be aromatic again to get your product so you, here you have your product your substituted product so this electrophile has replaced that hydrogen right here okay so the formation of a carbocation is a very determining step because obviously you see the activation energy here is higher than the activation energy there on the second transition state so activation energy one is higher than activation energy two so this step right here is the rate determining step okay so let's talk about the first reaction so for halogenation you're adding halogens the problem is ClCl and BrBr are very weak electrophiles and the benzene itself is very stable and that is not that reactive so to really activate these two guys and make them reactive we use a Lewis acid as a catalyst we use the corresponding ion trihalide so remember what we said catalysts reduce the activation energy makes the reaction to go faster so chlorine by itself will not react quickly so we use the catalyst FeCl three now if you are using br2 then you're gonna you must use its corresponding ion catalyst which is febr3 because this helps you to give you a more activated halogen which can be taken out by the ring that's what the catalyst does okay so this is the br version so i need to write Bia all over the place, Bia and Bia. So now this one, because now it bears a true partial positive charge, where here there's no partial positive charge because it's the same, there's no dipole moment, but here there is, because there's a pool of electrons by the ion. So this is now activated, this is now a strong electrophile, what would have called E. Plus. Now for chlorine, same applies. You add chlorine to Fe Cl3 catalyst. One of the chlorine will use its lone pairs to attack the ion center. So you're gonna get this complex. The ion will be negatively charged, formal charge, and this chlorine will be partially positive. Um, so you're gonna get an activated chloride that can be used to be uh, to in the electrophilic aromatic substitution electrophilic aromatic substitution of benzene electrophilic aromatic substitution of benzene so we really need these catalysts that's my emphasis you need this catalyst for this reaction to go so how does the reaction go you've activated your chloride by reacting it with the acid catalyst so the benzene will play the role of a nucleophile this chloride will play the role of an electrophile use the pi bond to take out that chlorine this bond obviously has to go okay making a true bond between the other chlorine and the ion so you're gonna make ion cl4 because you had cl3 but now you added one more chlorine as you do that you get a carbocation because this carbon right here will be one bond less and then this can go through uh, resonances okay now you notice that this carbon right here is sp3 hybridized which means it's gonna be tetrahedral shaped it's no longer sp2 which is trigonal planar tetrahedral shaped cleans pl kills planarity and now the benzene is no longer aromatic because we said 
for aromaticity one of the rules is that it must be planar so because of sp3 hybridization you get a trihedromolecular geometry around this carbon the ring is no longer planar uh, so it's anti-aromatic and for that reason we go one more step to make it aromatic we use one of the chlorines in the flask or chlorides in the flask to take out the hydrogen and then gain back the carbon. now everything is back to be sp2 including this carbon okay all sp2s including that carbon so it gained back its planarity and now it's aromatic and of course it's substituted the cl replaced the hydrogen so in summary you have gone from a benzene ring you added cl2 by the help of a catalyst FeCl3, you end up with a substituted benzene. That's the summary. So whenever you see Cl2, FeCl3, you are simply going to add a chlorine. If the combination right here was Br2, Br2, FeBr3, you would simply add a bromine instead of the chlorine in which case the product would have been uh, that okay so if you're starting with benzene you are reacting with this combination br2 febr3 the product should be that okay so it's very similar to chlorination so another electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction is nitration the electrophile here is going to be NO2+. plus. I'm giving you this because that's how you know what ends up on the ring. So what? how do you make your NO2+. plus? You're going to need uh, sulfuric acid as a catalyst to make the electrophile, which is NO2+, plus, which is the nitronium ion, NO2+. plus. So, you know, sulfuric acid is an acid. It's a proton donor. So we use the proton from the sulfuric acid uh, 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 we use the proton to make OH a good living group OH is not a good living group because if it falls off you get a strong base we'll talk about this in a later chapter you want it to leave as water which is neutral rather than OH minus so we activate OH to leave so we use the proton to active to do that so we use a lone pair on that oxygen of the OH to attack the proton, you're gonna get uh, the HOH, which looks like water, so that falls off as a living group. Okay, it falls off like as a living group LG, and then whatever you're left with is NO2. There's gonna be a push effect that helps the water to leave actually. So let me reiterate so the push effect is this you use a lone pair from this side make a double bond nitrogen wants to maintain its four bonds so this has to break off that's how the water leaves you made a new pi bond now you have two electron domains around the nitrogen so that nitrogen has to be sp hybridized 180 degrees bond angle and linear molecular geometry so this is the no2 plus that's going to be added on the ring. So the ring will be used as a nucleophile. We are attacking the NO2. So if, you, if this pi bond opens up to attack the NO2, the NO2 ends up here. It means that this other carbon right here would be one bond less. It bears the plus sign. So you get the resonance contributing structures which are stabilized by resonance. So you push this one here. The carbon behind gets a plus charge. You push this one here by resonance. The carbon here gets a plus charge. These are resonance contributing structures. And then remember, all these guys are not aromatic. They are not aromatic. Can you remind, can you remind me why? The reason is all these carbon centers are sp3s where you added your electrophile NO2. They are sp3s. Remember, sp3s are tetrahedromolecular geometry. That's not planar. That's 3D. So to gain back aromaticity, which is one of the rule of 
of aromatic compounds one of the characteristic of aromatic compounds to uh, to gain back the aromaticity you would want it to be flat you want it to be planar so you're gonna use a base let's just use a generic base b minus take off the hydrogen and then use this bond to the hydrogen to make a pi bond okay so now it has gained its aromaticity back it started being aromatic went through the resonance structures which are not aromatic because they are not planar as you can see this 3d geometry here like this still the extra hydrogen take it out make a double bond now you have three pi bonds as you start as as what you started with so the h is now replaced by the no2 you've nitrated the molecule so the reaction is nitration okay so you get a molecule called nitrobenzene another electrophilic aromatic substitution is sulfonation and the e plus in this case is gonna be an so3 molecule okay so sulfonation we generate benzyl sulfonic acid nitration generated nitrobenzene sulfonation generate benzene sulfonic acid of course like i said the electrophile is e plus is gonna be equal to so3 it's a strong electrophile this is the structure of the electrophile you definitely can draw resonances if you want okay so it's usually written as fuming sulfuric acid in presence of so3 fuming sulfuric acid which means it's super 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 concentrated so you move from the benzene ring it's gonna add so3h and that so3h can be knocked out if you want to make an alcohol out of it by heating in a strong base high temperature sodium hydroxide knocks off the sulfonic group to an oh okay so while sulfonic acids are useful uh, by themselves they can also be a conduit for making al uh, aromatic alcohols like phenols so you can make the sulfonic acid and then of course knock it out by what you call hydrolysis thermohydrolysis you will knock out the so3h substitute, substitute it with an oh the other type of electrophilic aromatic substitution is alkylation there are two types of reactions that go by the name Fredocraft. so one of it is Fredocraft alkylation the other one is Fredocraft acylation but the other way of doing alkylation is simply using an alkene and an acid because you know that if you start with an alkyl like this in presence of an acid you're gonna make a carbocation and that carbocation becomes the electrophile which can be added on the ring so for example let's say you have a benzene ring and you have a propene in presence of a h plus so basically this propene will first make the carbocation before the carbocation is added on the ring okay so let's say this is the hydrogen of interest we are substituting so that hydrogen will be taken out and the propene will be added okay so that's the new bond to this three carbon structure which is the carbocation so that's another way you can alkylate the other way you can alkylate is by Fredocraft reaction where you will start with for example a benzene and an alkyl chloride okay but still i think you know alkyl alkenes are not very reactive even alkyl chlorides and alkyl halides are not reactive so we're gonna need another catalyst alcl3 which helps us to make the same same carbocation intermediate here that's eventually gonna be attached onto the ring so I'm going to use a different color here so you can see that I'm attaching the three carbons onto the ring just like that. So both 
fluoroquinone after alkylation and acid catalyzed uh, alkylation with alkenes will give you um, alkylated products. Okay, so let's talk about the first one, which is Fredocraft. So, assume you have um, your catalyst and you have your alkyl. So let's say you have, yeah, let's say you have your uh, alkyl halide, where R could be any count of carbons. So the first thing that happens, like we did with chlorination, is activation of this alkyl halide because alkyl halides are not very reactive. So we use a Lewis acid, we use the chlorine to attack the aluminum. You get this structure, the aluminum bear negative charge. And actually, the best way we should have shown this is pushing the arrow from the bond because that way now we're going to be left with a plus charge on the carbon because now this bond is gone and it's used to make a bond between the CN and the aluminum. This carbon right here is one bond less, so it's going to bear a plus charge. Simply drawn to match what we have here, you'll have a plus sign there once the chlorine leaves with its bond. So this one is what I call an electrophile that the ring will be more than happy to attack. Okay. So for example, if this R group right there is a CH3, then what you'll have is CH3 here, which would have been the R group, and then you attack it. So again, you get resonance structures that are not aromatic. These are not aromatic. And because they are not aromatic, we'll have to use a base somehow to pull off the extra hydrogen make a double bond to make the molecule more aromatic again so you moved from a benzene ring with a hydrogen you replace the hydrogen with an alkyl group this reaction is alkylation in this Fredocraft who always uses the catalyst AlCl3 alongside the alkyl halide for example in this case There are limitations of Fredocraft reactions. They don't work whenever the benzene ring has electron drawing groups. For example, if the benzene ring primarily has an, a nitro group, which, which we, we know in essence should be electron drawing, then the ring is deactivated. The ring will not do this kind of reaction. Also, if you can have another electron drawing group like a sulfonic acid, which is known to be electron drawing, that will stop the reaction from happening okay because these groups make a complex with aluminum chloride and in fact for where you have electron donating group like an ammonia because the nitrogen has a lone pair that can go into the ring so that's why i'm calling it electron donating group like an amine okay so amines have lone pairs on the nitrogen which can be donated to the ring that activates the ring but the problem even though this guy is an electron donating group while these ones were electron drawing groups it's not gonna do the photograph because again the nitrogen will complex with the alumina and the nitrogen will turn to be positively charged and that de that deactivates the ring so electron drawing groups and a means present on a benzene will not lead to a reaction with Fredocraft reactions. Alright, so the other type of alkylation, like I said, is when you're using propene and an acid catalyst. So do Markovnikov addition, the hydrogen goes where there's more across the double, bond, which is on this carbon. Here you only have one hydrogen, here there are two. So attack the hydrogen. And then you're going to get CH3 here. This will be one bond less. You get a plus sign. So this is your electrophile that's formed by Markovnikov addition. Now this electrophile will be used by the ring. Okay. This electrophile will be used by the ring in electrophilic aromatic substitution going through the resonance intermediates so i'm not going to show the resonance intermediates so the product here will be 
your propene that's added onto your ring after going through the resonance contributing structures okay so the hydrogen that was here is now replaced by the isopropyl group the second type of photograph reaction is acylation still you're gonna use the same same catalyst alco3 which is characteristic of photograph reactions whether it's alkylation or acylation so i like i said chlorine needs to be taken out so i would modify and start from here so you 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 mod, you, you attack the aluminum center okay you make your al negative group and of course this carbon is now going to be one bond less it's going to be c plus after the cl detaches so this one now is your electrophile and this molecule can do resonances to get this structure so we call this structure an acelium acelium ion and that's what's used in photograph substitution so let's say we start with a benzene ring and you're doing uh, this reaction so let's see i'm gonna give you a shortcut for this okay simply put i know the cl should fall off to give me this structure so that's what's gonna be the ring is gonna attack that carbon center so in other words you're making a ketone so your r group can be any carbon containing group okay could be a methyl ethyl another ring so your benzene ring will be right here after the resonance structures in the mechanism so you have replaced this hydrogen with this part that came from the acyl chloride okay so like i said benzene is going to be used as a nucleophile to attack the acylium ion this carbon will be one bond less this one right here you have hydrogen there it will be one bond less so it takes the plus charge which can go around the ring by resonance then use a base to re-aromatize so you get a ketone we call acetophenone in this case where the r group is a ch3 same limitations apply if you have electron drawing groups presently on the original ring or if you have um, let's say some sort of an amine then the reaction will not go remember electron drawing groups uh, include nitro sulfonic acid it could also include ketone on the ring those are electron drawing group it could include an aldehyde on the ring before the reaction happened that's that's an electron drawing group or it could be electron donating group in which case only the amine that will stop the reaction okay reaction rates which ring is more reactive and how can we tell which one is more reactive it's gonna play with the electron withdrawing effects or electron donating effects electron withdrawing groups or electron donating groups so remember the ring so far has been reacting as a nucleophile see like here it's reacting as a nucleophile uh, here it's reacting as a nucleophile attacking the positive center which is the electrophile same thing here is acting as a nucleophile here it's acting as a nucleophile nucleophiles will be strong nucleophiles if there is more electron density and what brings more electron density electron donating groups so the more 
the stronger the electron donating group you have presently on the ring, the more reactive the ring will be. There is a table that shows who is electron donating, whose electron drawing is coming up. So OH sitting presently on the ring has oxygen. The oxygen has two lone pairs. I know that because you have two bonds, which is four electrons. You are, meeting, you are missing four bonds to make the octet rule. So those four the four electrons missing are the two long pair of electrons. So um, these long pairs can be donated by resonance into the ring, right? And you can go round and round and round. So OH is a strong electron donating group because it can donate by resonance. Okay, CH, there's no lone pair here. You, have, you already have four bonds, but it's an alkyl group. It donates by inductive effect. So this donates by, induct, by inductive effect, electron density donation through bond. This is, the OH is donating by resonance. Both of them are EDGs. This is just a hydrogen. I told you hydrogen does not do much of electron donation by inductive effect okay halogens are further to the right of the periodic table the chlorine bromine iodine so the electron drawing okay but they do have lone pairs those lone pairs will compensate for the loss of electron groups from the ring by electron withdrawing by by electron withdrawal so we know halogens are electron drawing groups, but they are weakly activating because these electrons cancel out the withdrawing effect. The nitro group will have an, an, a plus charge on the nitrogen. If you draw the open bond structure of the Lewis, the Lewis structure of NO2, you realize that the nitro has a plus charge on the nitrogen. Obviously, that's a very strong electron drawing group because electrons will want to go neutralize, neutralize the plus sign. So NO2 is the, is the strongest electron drawing group. Look at the rate of reaction. It almost will not react. Okay. Uh, versus the OH where it will readily react. It, OH reacts a thousand times more than benzene. And benzene can react how many times? One, two, three, four, six, seven. Seven. Is that 10 million times the benzene ring having a nitro group? So electron drawing groups are deactivators. They are ring deactivators. Electron donating groups are, weak, are, are, are benzene ring activators. Okay. So I'm talking about this chart right here. All these guys, so let's say you have a benzene ring here. That's not a fancy ring, but let's say you have benzene ring. All where these bonds are hanging, you have benzene rings. Okay? And this happens to be substituents sitting on benzene rings. So you'd expect any element that has a lone pair di attached directly to the ring to be a very strong electron donating group. Let me draw it large here for clarity. So, for example, OH donated by resonance, and now here you're looking at amines can donate by resonance. So, the clue is if you have an element sitting directly to the ring and it it's bearing a lone pair, that's a very strong activator. Okay, it's a very strong activator. So, all these up to here have lone pairs on the element sitting directly on to the rings. So they're very strong activators. And then these are alkyl groups. They donate by inductive effect. And then halogens come by here because they have lone pairs, which can uh, slightly be donated into the ring, even though we know that halogens are electron drawing groups. That's why they're here. Okay. And then all these other guys below, the, these, these are the activators. Okay. Why? Because either you're pulling electrons by 
inductive effect due to dipole dipole pointing outward outwards away from the ring or you have a plus charge directly sitting on an element directly bonded to the ring so the plus charge has a huge effect of electron drawing so these are EWGs okay these are EDGs and the halogens are special halogens are not electron donating groups as much they are not electron drawing they are weakly deactivating okay so you have deactivating groups in blue uh, you have activating groups in blue and deactivating groups in somewhat brown okay okay so like i said you can use long pairs to activate the ring or you can activate the ring by inductive effect i want you to know that donation by resonance will always win over donation by inductive effect or you could pull electrons by inductive effect or by resonance you can pull electrons from the ring by resonance at the same time also by inductive effect that's why no2 is very deactivating it puts a plus charge after the resonance on the ring while this one's putting a negative charge on the ring which makes the ring more of a nucleophile these nitro groups make the ring more of an electrophile it deactivates it okay so like I said, if you want benzene ring to be reactive, you want it to be electron rich, you want it to play the role of a nucleophile, the electron density should be higher in the ring. So whenever you have, um, what's this, whenever you just have a hydrogen, you know there's a sweet equal spread of the electrons. You see the brown, orange color is the electron density. Whenever you have an alkyl group, let's say an R group, you're donating through bond, you see the brown patch increases, right? And then here, for example, you have, I think this is NO2. Whenever you have NO2, you no longer have the electron cloud here. It's all taken outside the structure. So the benzene ring here is deactivated. Okay. So we are comparing whenever you have a, a H, an R group, and NO2 sitting on the ring. NO2 deactivates it. So that this ring is deactivated because of the presence of a very strong electron donating group. While the alkyl groups are electron donating group, not very much because they donate through bond. And this hydrogen is just a reference for comparison. Remember the brown patches in this cartoon represents electron clouds which is what you want for benzene for benzene to react with an electrophile uh, to do a uh, electrophilic aromatic substitution okay so if you have to do electrophilic aromatic substitution you want the benzene ring to be activated you want it to have a more electron density like the brown patches rather than having it Without it, where you only have blue patches here in NO2, the ring is deactivated. It's likely won't, it's likely gonna react slow or not won't react at all. Okay. So we will continue from here the directing effects of these groups in the few minutes left.